All right, so today I'm going to go over an 820-3330 motherboard that was having issues with the USB port. The client stated that they had no, no USB ports working, so the first one and the second one were both dead. I tried it out, and I noticed that actually one of the ports worked. It was only one of them that was dead, and... I decided to go from there and try to get a little an idea of what it was that was going on. Now, as you can probably tell, the microphone pop filter that I'm using has gotten uh, larger and larger. So, as I said, I just recently did a video on why I use the DPA 4065 over every other microphone and why I find it to be one of the best. Literally, the video after I did that, my DPA 4065 died, which brings me back to this piece of crap, which is the cheap Shure SM35. It's like a $100 microphone. You get what you pay for. It sounds like a piece of crap. And one of the problems with it is plosives, constant, nonstop plosives. Like, if you if you breathe the wrong way, this microphone, you just, just ugh, it's just garbage. So... What I did is I have a shotgun microphone, not the, the nice Sennheiser one. I'm not going to touch the Sennheiser one. The one that Civil Lizard got, I'm keeping that one because I'm going to use that for, for stuff. But the little shitty, crappy, garbage Sony microphone that comes with the Sony camcorder has this huge pop filter that's meant for a shotgun microphone. So I actually just cut it with a set, a set of scissors, and I put it over the pop filter that goes on here. All these little pop filters that you get to go on the end of headset mics, they're meant to look nice. But they don't actually do much, again, especially if your headset mic is a complete steaming pile of shit, like the Shure SM35 is. So, I, yeah, I don't give a fuck if I look silly. I actually think it looks kind of cool that it's completely, totally non-proportional to anything going on here. So, anyway, let's. I've already fixed this, and I want to go over a little bit of what's wrong, because I know that this is something that's going to trick a lot of people. So, if you look over in the... In the USB area over here, you're going to see that I've replaced a couple of things. Under the microscope, you'll see some flux. So, yeah, you see a filter, and you'll see another filter, and you'll see another filter. And I want to talk about a couple of ideas because just things that I know are going to get new people. So a lot of what I do when I'm talking about uh, with a, the, what I'm doing to fix these boards, it's not really me wanting you to do exactly what I did because your problem is going to be different than my problem. So it doesn't really make sense for you to take my solution and apply it to your problem because your problem is going to be different. You may have no USB, but when I say different problem, I don't mean that I have no USB and you have no USB. I mean that on mine, you know, the diff the first differential pair has a bad filter on the USB data line, and on yours, the second high super speed differential pair has a bad filter on the data line. We're always going to have something different. There's always going to be something different with my problem than yours. But what I want you to do is I want you to pick up my mindset, because if you pick up my mindset, you'll be able to apply that mindset to all different types of problems, and you'll be able to solve them on your own rather than be forced to look on the internet for somebody else to provide you with a solution. So one of the concepts I want to get across in this video is that when an inductor is used as a filter on a data line to keep out, you know, erroneous noise, that very often that filter is going to measure properly on a multimeter. And what I mean when I say a filter, let's just go over to the schematic here on the PDF so that I can show you what I'm talking about. So this is the USB port that wasn't working. This is J4700. Now J4700 over here is has so we have the super speed stuff, the super speed stuff, and then we have our basic differential pair, the standard crap that gets used for USB. So this over here is for the USB 2 L4700. You have these diodes going to ground, you have this filter going between the first differential pair, which is the data line for USB 2.0, and that is going to go to a MUX chip, and then that MUX chip over here is going to go straight over to the PCH. And you really want to hope that it's not the PCH, because if it's the PCH, it's, it's not something that's going to be worth doing. You don't want to take a board that fully works besides one USB port, and then replace a chip that you can only get on eBay from fuck knows who, replace that thing where there's a good chance you could break the board replacing it. There's a very high chance the chip you buy is bullshit and then have a, a dead board or for a beeping board or a board that turns on but doesn't do anything for your customer. So we don't fuck with the PCH on boards that where everything works. We don't want to do that. That, that, that that's, that's not something that you're going to do. You're not a PCH re re replacer for, for hire. That, that's a bad idea. So this is a filter. This is another filter. Then this over here, this is going to be for the super speed portion. This is what makes USB 3 USB 3, which is that extra data line. And this over here is going directly to the PCH. And then you have another one. More stuff for super speed. Now, here's the thing about the filter. 
Here's the thing about the filter. When you go to measure this in resistance mode on your multimeter, see it says 80 ohm or 90 ohm or whatever like that, this is the important part that a lot of people are going to get wrong and it's going to screw up a lot of people. A, a filter can be bad. That filter cannot be equipped or suited for USB 3 transmission or even USB 2 transmission. But on your multimeter, it will measure just fine. Do you know why it'll measure fine in your multimeter but not provide USB on the board? Because your multimeter is sending one boring-ass little signal, just some boring, flat little voltage. And then it's waiting for that little boring, flat voltage to come back on the other end. Whereas USB, in USB 3, when you have three 6 gigabit per second speeds going through it, I forget what USB 3 is, if it's like 3 or 4 or 5, what, it's gigabit per second transfer speeds that you have going on there. When you have that gigabit per second speed going on, you have a lot of data moving back and forth. So you have pulse, no pulse, pulse, no pulse, pulse, no pulse, pulse. And that filter, all it has to do is get one of those millions of pulses a second wrong, and you have no USB. Whereas, again, the multimeter, all it's sending one static pulse through and just hoping that it gets it back on the other end. That's what the multimeter's doing. But, again, what USB is doing is millions of pulses per second. And only one of those pulses is to be fucked up for this to not work. So, even if the filter measures perfectly fine on your multimeter, it could still actually not work and cause you to have non-working USB. So, your question at this point may be, well, gee, if I can't test it, then well, what do I do? Because you know, a lot of people who come to the, the tutoring course here, a lot of people who also went to Jess's class, a lot of the, one of the main questions is, you know, how do we measure these components so we can fix these boards? What are we looking for? How do we measure them? And the answers, and again, the reason that, I, that a, lot, a lot of the times Answering these questions can be a nightmare on the internet, especially when people like you know, or say things like, I will pay for you to answer this one question. The reason that's a nightmare is because a lot of the times I'm giving people answers that they don't want. So when somebody will say, how do I measure this inductor by USB? I'll say, you replace it, and you see if it works. And they don't like that answer, but the real answer is going to be, well, you buy a $40,000 spectrum analyzer and tone generator, and you read what comes out on the other end. But you don't like that answer because that answer involves you spending $40,000. And then the other answer is, well, you replace it. But you don't like that answer because you don't have donor boards, because you don't have a pile like me where you can just take another one of those filters of the exact same specification, rip it off, and put it on there. You don't like that I don't have the exact answer to the question that you want, but that is the answer. The practical way to measure that filter is to replace it. The impractical but, you know, like proper way to measure that filter is that $40,000 worth of test equipment, put a bunch of little signals in, see exactly what comes out, overlay them over one another, do some differential analysis, and you'll figure out what you get, but that's... No. You, you, get, you get a fucking $15 or $30 donor board, you take off those little one-cent components from them, you don't buy them from Mouser, you don't buy them from DigiKey, you don't wait one or two or six weeks for it to come here, because your customer who had a perfectly working fucking computer besides one USB port is going to rip you a new one if they're waiting weeks on you to order all this shit from Mouser to figure out what's, gone, what's wrong. What you do is you replace them. So... I just started over there. So the other thing that I did here, just to make sure that I wasn't getting myself into a rabbit hole to hell, is I measured in diode mode to ground, or you can do this with resistance mode if your multimeter doesn't have diode mode. Diode mode is a bit easier and it'll just... Uh, quicker to work with. What I did is I also measured on the other side. So you see how this USB EXT uh, B goes to a MUX chip? So let's find that. So that goes to this thing over here. And then this is going to go to the PCH. So what I did is I go to the PCH is USB section over here. So you have USB ECHI, oh duh, you can't see. So you have USB ECHI, USB XCHI, and all this other USB crap. So you know what I'm doing over here is I'm measuring in diode motor ground, my red probe on ground, my black probe on there, or if you don't have that, you can use resistance mode, and I'm comparing my values to a known working board. And what this is going to do is it's going to tell me if my PCH is dead. So if my PCH is fucked, my values are going to be very, very different. And if the, if the issue is with my PCH... Then this is over. Then I'm, uh, you know, no, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna buy yourself a little USB hub. Or you're just gonna fucking live with the fact that you have one USB port and use your FireWire, your Thunderbolt. Because hell if I'm, hell if I'm replacing again, I am not replacing a PCH on a known good board. There's a small chance of me fucking up the soldering. There's a really big chance of the PCH that you buy on the internet being complete pile of shit. You know. 
Ain't like we can knock on an inner cell's door and say, hi, inner cell, I'd like a PCH. Here's 50 bucks. Will you give me? No, that, 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 that doesn't happen. That, that's not how the world works, unfortunately. Uh, you know, again, someday we're going to la- someday people are going to laugh over the fact that we had a scavenge and dumpster dive to find stuff to fix anything. Someday the world will laugh. But right now, the way the world works, it is a joke. We fix stuff by dumpster diving and it, it, it's wrong and it's bullshit and it's crap. But that's, you know, the world isn't perfect and we just have to live with it. So the USB port that wasn't working was this one over here. So I'm going to plug this thing in. And what I want you to see is that it's going to see my USB 3 uh, enclosure with an SSD plugged into it over there. And it's going to show me a little external drive icon on the screen. And when I see the little external drive icon, I'll know that uh, that, that, that USB is good or it was not good before. I don't think I plugged the keyboard in all the way, so instead of show me that icon, it may just start booting into an operating system, which is also good because that'll also show you that USB works. Um, why do you always have to do something stupid or not work when I turn the camera on? Is it absolutely necessary to make me look like an idiot for every video? Is it really necessary, motherboard? Okay. So I didn't plug the keyboard in all the way. Whatever. It's, 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 it's four in the morning. I'm tired. Fuck that. But what you can see over here is that I am booting into the operating system that is on my little SSD with this USB 3. It's a SATA StarTech thing I got on Amazon for 12 bucks. Really useful little tool. It's great because it's, it's USB 3. It's a really durable wire, and all the, the entire chipset is inside of here. It's, it's made to be used by people you know, like us that are not using it with, an, with a drive where we're going we're gonna to keep it in there, like, an, you know, uh, like a backup drive that we're going to build for ourselves. This is meant to be used by people who are just handling raw drives and just leaving them out for testing purposes. So as you can see here, I am able to boot. It is going to take a while because I don't have a trackpad or a battery plugged in, so it's going to run slow. But it does work. Actually, the, yeah, this is the wrong SSD. This is the one that has ASD on it, and this is not the ASD for that machine. Well, it ain't ever going to boot, but you get the idea. So we have working USB, and, and the, 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 really the lesson that I want you to get from this video is to understand that measuring components, and this is, this is what really sucks for new people, but it's something that I wish was pointed out to me. Again, if somebody had pointed this out to me you know, 10 years ago, my life would have been a lot easier for a long time. What I would have wished somebody pointed out to me is that what, again, you're, the way you measure is not always just mathematically. It's not. Sometimes you measure with your eyeballs. Sometimes your eyes are going to tell you that something looks like crap when it measures 47 ohms in the multimeter. And it's going to tell you that while the component is actually good, that the solder joint under it is not, or that the V is right by it is nasty. Or sometimes it's going to be that the component actually measures fine because, it, because the signal that you're sending through it for measuring is, is, is a very basic signal. But the signal that's actually going through it on the board is a very complex signal, and that complex signal can't make it through that component once that component has failed. But the simple signal will make it through. It's these types of things that are going to drive you nuts. It's these type of things that are going to keep you up at night. It's these types of things that are going to make you look like an idiot. It's these types of things that have made me look like an idiot. So I feel like sharing so that you don't look like an idiot. So as always, I hope you learned something.